Hey, fourth graders. So I'm ready for chapter 21. So I'll record it and then post it this afternoon. Um, and if you're really wanting more, I'll post chapter 22 and we can just keep on going. So um, it's been fun to see how many of you are listening to our story and commenting um, on things that you're liking about the story. So here we go. Chapter 21. Going to the bathroom, it's a kind of weird chapter, at school just stinks. I have to be taken out of my chair, lifted onto the toilet, and then held there so I don't fall. Then, to be honest, someone has to take care of wiping me when I'm finished. It's not so bad when it's my mom, but it's awful when it's a classroom aide that has to do it for me. She's required to wear plastic gloves just in case I have some kind of disease. It's very embarrassing. I don't usually have to go first thing in the morning, but I'm so nervous on Tuesday I have to go twice. Then I do go to all my inclusion classes. The students who tried out for the quiz team can't stop chatting about the test. I listen to every word. Can't believe how easy it was, Connor boasts. I bet I got a higher score than you did, Claire says, her voice quite cocky. I thought those geography questions were off the map, Rose adds. I'd never even heard of some of those countries. Jessica shakes her head. The math part wasn't any fun either. I can't believe we even care about a dumb test for a quiz team, Rodney comments. Because the competition is on television, Connor replies. Big time, TV coverage. If we make the finals, we get to go to D.C. Where will it be, where it will be televised all over the country? If we win, we even get to be on Good Morning America. My grandma in Philadelphia can watch me and my aunt in San Francisco. I will be famous. What do you mean, if we win, Connor? Claire asks. Don't you mean when we win the competition? Yeah, for sure. I already bought a new suit for when we were on TV. Ro Rose rolls her eyes. I thought this was a team competition, she reminds him. Hey, that team would be nothing without me. He holds up his hand in the air for high fives. I listen quietly in the back of the room. When the bell rings to indicate it's time for Mr. Deming's class, my palms are sweaty. Catherine pushes me into the room and whispers, relax, you rock. Mr. Deming gets the class quiet and takes attendance. Why do teachers go so slowly when you want something from them? Finally, he moves a sheet of paper from his briefcase. I graded your quiz team test last night. Since many of you who tried out for the competition team are in this class, I'm going to share the results with you now. The teachers of the other classes who have students who tried out have been given the same list, and they are at this exact same moment reading the results to them. So read the list already, Connor shouts, getting up from his desk. If classroom behavior were a determining factor for making the team, Connor, you would be in trouble, Mr. Deming says. Please quiet down. That stops him, and he sits down. First of all, I'm very proud of you, to all of you who took the test. It was very challenging, and you all did extremely well. Rose quietly raises her hand. Yes, Rose. Can we see the questions and the answers later so we will know where we messed up? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we're going to use the test as a learning tool to study for the real competition. But anyone is free to see the test and check their answers. Please, just read the names, Connor says as politely as I've ever heard him. Mr. Deming smiles. Okay, will do. I will read the alternates first. There are two fifth graders and two sixth graders. Amanda Firestone, Molly North, Elena Rodriguez, and Rodney Mosel. My heart falls to my shoes, which is not quite the floor, but close. How could I have missed so many questions? Maybe my thumb slips and I piss push the wrong letters. Catherine just squeezes my hand. Molly and Rodney are screeching with joy. Amanda and Elena are sixth graders, and Connor is noticeably quiet. And now, Mr. Deming continues, the names of the four students who scored the highest and will represent our school at the local competition downtown. The alternates will go with and will be called if any of the team members are unable to participate in any way. Are you ready? Ready, Connor says softly. I notice he has his fingers crossed behind his back. I'm proud to report that all four are from this classroom, he pauses. To know all the finalists from fifth grade blew me away. Way to go, kids. We beat say, grade six? That's awesome, Rodney says. Now read the names before Connor wets his pants. Connor reaches over and whacks Rodney on the back of his head. Mr. Neming takes a long, deep breath. The top four members of our quiz team will be...
Connor Bates. Connor interrupts him with a wild whooping cheer, of course. If I may continue, says Mr. D over his glasses, we're also pleased to welcome Claire Wilson and Rose Spencer. Claire's smile is smug. That's only three, Connor says, looking around in confusion. Yes, I can count, Connor, Mr. Deming says. So who's the last person on the team, Molly asks. Earthquake report. TV weather guy feels some strange activity coming from a local school. Could it be a girl's heartbeat pounding too hard? Mr. Deming clears his throat. I have to apologize. I think we have all underestimated one member of our class. Earthquake report. This is a big one. He continues, in my 15 years of running the competition, I have never had a student get a perfect score on the practice test. The practice test is designated to be challenging to weed out weaker candidates. In another word, it's hard. Tell me about it, Connor mumbles. When Melody Brooks took that little practice quiz last week, I thought it was just an accident that she did so well. But yesterday, Melody blew us all away. She got every single question right. He pauses, making sure everyone is understanding and taking them in. And then he says it again. All of them. Earthquake report. Walls are tumbling, tumbling everywhere. So she's on the team? Rose asks with disbelief in her voice. Yes, she is on the team. But she's going to make us look weird, Claire Connors. Every counters, everyone will stare at our team. I'm not going to have any of this kind of talk. Do you understand, Mr. D says sternly? I am very proud of Melody, and I am sorry that I underestimated her. I am proud to have her on our team. Earthquake report. Call the paramedics. A girl in fifth grade is just about to, to explode. Everybody in the class turns to look at me. Catherine gives me a big hug. Rose flashes a smile, and I try not to kick and drip and make my teammates sorry I'm on their team with them. Will the Whiz Kids folks be cool with Melody? Molly asks. Mr. Deming looks thoughtful. I am going to contact the quiz team officials and let them know we have some special circumstances. But that is no concern of yours. So listen up. Team members need to meet every day after school for two hours for the next two weeks until the first competition. Practice sessions are mandatory. Here is paperwork for your parents to read and sign. Bring it back tomorrow. Earthquake report. There are big aftershocks. Nothing like this has ever been seen before. The more I think about it, the more excited I get. TV, pressure, people looking at me. I can feel myself starting to get tense and tight, and my arms are starting to do that tornado dance. My head is jerking. I try not to, but I screech just a little. Everybody turns around. I can see Molly and Claire jerking their hands and kicking their legs and making noises. A few people giggle at them. Mr. Deming's face goes very tight. I aim all my energy at my thumb and point to the word, go. Catherine gets my message and hurries me out of there. I feel like I want to find a hole and hide in it. Till tomorrow.